Well, good morning, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. Well, you're probably noticing one little difference in this setup that we normally have, me standing here, and it's this guy. Well, yesterday, even though you got a vlog, I didn't have to vlog. I filmed four vlogs in one day on my road trip, and I got to take a day off. So while I was out basically taking my day off, all I did was run errands and get things done. And while I was out, I saw this at the 99 cent store for $4.99. I don't know how that works, how it can be a 99 cents only store, but it'd be $4.99. Anyway, I thought it would look cool, and it lights up. So that's our new backdrop. Well, what's up, gang? Well, today's vlog is a little adventure for us all. I wanted to give Ja a little uh, chance to go out and have some fun out in nature, and it ties in with our vlog today. Today I'm going to do a vlog on a man that many consider to be the epitome of leading man, Cary Grant, Archie Leach. But this story has nothing to do really with his movie career. This is actually to do has something to do with his career in experimenting with LSD. Cary Grant, many may not know, was one of the earliest proponents of dropping acid. So today I'm going to take you to where he liked to drop acid, tell you how that all came about, why he did it, and why he stopped. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, it looks like we've made it. Now for a long time, this has been a very popular spot for filming. Well, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to say hi to you, so say hello, Jaw. Now we've been out here to vlog this before, so we're not going to do all the same stuff, obviously, but uh, this you might remember from when I did the Beverly Hillbillies vlog, and I did the pilot episode. That's where the that's where the truck comes down that that path right there, and now they've put a cement barricade there, but the Clampett Shack was right here. So we're actually going to be heading off into the hiking trails. Now back in the day, this area was known as Myers Lake, it's known as Franklin Canyon, and Cary Grant called it the Beverly Hills Reservoir. Now most of the reason that Cary Grant turned to LSD or acid was like most genius creators, was the troubled childhood that he had. Well, we're standing right where the Andy Griffith fishing hole scene was filmed. You would have seen Andy and Opie walking down right through here, so it's kind of funny to think of Opie skipping that rock right here. The rocks aren't here anymore, those, those big boulders, but to think of Cary Grant out here tripping on acid, exploring his mind in the same place that they filmed that scene. Cary Grant, born Archibald Leach, grew up in a troubled household, like I mentioned, and it was his father was pretty hard alcoholic, much like many fathers were back then, and his mother showed signs of manic depression. Some believe it was a result of his father's drinking, but while Cary was at school one day at the age of 10 years old, he came home and his father said that his mother went for a walk by the water and she never came home. A few months later, he would be told that his mother actually had passed away. Carrie and his father would move in with his grandparents, and then Carrie's father would meet a much younger woman, have a new baby, and they would start a life of their own. When Carrie expressed interest in wanting to go live with them, they were the ones that told him, we just don't have room for you. It would be 20 years later that he would find out that his mother was alive and had been put in an basically an insane asylum for the last 20 years. Good job, Ja. Now this all left a very lasting impression in Carrie's life and because of this he would have not only mother issues throughout his life but he would have problems trusting women and would never really have a terribly successful relationship until, well, until his daughter. You see, Cary Grant had become one of the biggest stars in the world, starring in Bringing Up Baby and An Affair to Remember, and yet he had no true happiness in his life. He said that he was turning into an alcoholic himself and just never had any kind of resolution with his, with his family life, his childhood. So once Cary was an established actor and was quite successful being known for a whole host of famous movies, 
His wife then, Betsy Drake, would talk him into trying out LSD for the first time. In those days, it was actually legal, and you could do it with supervision. So Carrie went on to experiment with it some over 100 times. <laughs> and would come here to do it. Now this would become such a big part of Carrie's life that when he and Betsy Drake would divorce, his next wife, Diane Cannon, Carrie would pretty much insist that she try it. He, to him, it was like a religious experience. It was also, he said, there was nothing that you could describe that came close to the feeling of feeling your conscious and subconscious uh, colliding together. And he said, you drop your inhibitions, your um, hypocrisies and everything that holds you back and pretty much from the time that he started experimenting with it on everyone would say he had this really keen insight to um, daily life he could give you wisdom and make you think of things that you hadn't really thought of before now Diane Cannon said that he was pretty influential and really, really insisted that she try it, even though she said I had zero interest in trying LSD. Carrie somehow thought that that would give us a successful marriage, which was kind of ironic considering the fact that he had done LSD with Betsy Drake and their marriage wasn't successful. So in the end, um, they ended up not getting along and it wasn't until 1966 when it was outlawed and simultaneously that same year, Diane Cannon became pregnant with Carrie's only daughter, Jennifer Grant, that he would quit using LSD or at least legally, some believe that he was still um, able to get it and would still experiment with it because I read a book that one of his girlfriends um, wrote who was a journalist and it was called An Affair to Remember and she talks about what a proponent he was and how he still enjoyed doing it when he could, even as a retired white-haired gentleman, he would still do LSD. And when Jennifer was born in 1966, Carrie retired from acting on film. Now, like I mentioned, Carrie's marriage has never really tended to work out, but his one successful relationship was with his daughter, Jennifer. So from the time that Jennifer was born, Carrie would dedicate his entire life to her education, her happiness, and would even leave her his house that is still there to this day. She still owns it. And he was one of the few people, as I understand, in those days, he made it a, uh, a requirement when he made a movie to get a copy of the movie. So when he passed away, Jennifer at the time was one of the only people to actually own a home movie long before VHS or anything like that. Cary Grant would tirelessly basically homeschool her in the ways of life. And so I can only imagine what talking to her must be like from the things that she learned from him. Now the reason I say that is because if you ever read any of the books about Cary Grant, some of his ideas and some of his theories on things, he was kind of like the crazy uncle that will tell you something and you go, there's no way that's true. And then the more you think about it, the more you start going, well, that could be true. And then by the end of the conversation, you completely agree with him. One of the things that Rob Lowe regaled people with was he said that he was trying to date Jennifer Grant when he was a young man. And he said the very first time an after school special aired that he was the star of, he was going over to the Grant's house to watch it. And Cary Grant asked if he could watch it with him. And as they watched it, Cary Grant looked over and said, you know, if you're ever on a dais, don't get caught eating a hot dog. And he said, why? He said, well, you don't want a photo of you eating a hot dog circulating forever. And surprisingly, you might think that because Cary Grant had a copy of all of his movies that he was probably an egomaniac or obsessed with watching them. No. In fact, his daughter said in her book, he never watched them. She said the only time she ever saw him watch one of the movies was when they were at a friend's house and the friend wanted to watch An Affair to Remember. That was the only time she could ever remember him seeing one of his own movies. So right now, we are out walking around, hanging out in this one of the places that Cary Grant would release his mind in, I guess you could say. 
One of the reasons that Kerry liked it so much out here was because he lived pretty much right down the street from this place. Stay out of the water there, buddy. I know you want to see the turtles, but relax. So if you're wondering how much damage had been done to Cary Grant's childhood brain, when he was 16, he actually left. I mean, he was born in Bristol and pretty much grew up feeling alone. So he got into going to the theater, became an acrobat, and at the age of 16, the company he was with came over to the United States to tour for two years and he stayed here. And then when he turned 18 and the touring stopped, he just stayed in New York and the rest was history. Now I plan on doing multiple Cary Grant vlogs because there's a lot of stories and a lot of different sections of his life that are really entertaining in their own right. So this will not be the last of them. If you look closely, you can see the water down in there. That's how much has grown up. This all used to be part of the water. That's why when you see the intro from the Andy Griffith show and you see him skipping the rocks and you saw where we were, you're almost like, how could that be possible? Well, it's because this used to be water. Well, let's go up, Ja. Good job. Such a smart dog. And this will not be the last time I'm out here at Franklin Canyon because there's another celebrity who liked to hang out here for a completely different reason. And someday we'll come back and do a vlog about that. And if you're in this area, it might be worth it for you to come check this out on some weekends. I know they do a guided tour where they take you around the park and show you different movies and different things that were filmed out here. If this whole section of Cary Grant's life was news to you, I hope that you got a kick out of it because, you know, that that's kind of what the fun in learning about people and learning about you know history is especially out in Los Angeles to think that in 1966 when everybody else was kind of just getting tuned into it when the Grateful Dead and the whole Haight-Ashbury scene was starting up when it was all illegal years before that Cary Grant was a pioneer of trying out LSD for the same exact reasons now let's head out of here I think Ja even enjoyed this one now, through Kerry's explorations with LSD, he said he found out that he was what he would consider to be a psychological killer to women. And he said that came from his mother's side. He said his mother, he wholeheartedly believed, was completely responsible for his father's drinking. He said she, um, from the earliest age, he could remember her um, badgering him and nagging him about money and about his job. And Kerry always believed that his father was forced to drink and even with that bitter relationship he and his father would have um, years later uh, when Carrie's father ended up passing away they pretty much passed away or he passed away on bitter terms with Carrie and um, Carrie was forced to then go back to England and visit his mother and he was the one that had to decide what to do with her and he said even when he showed up there she was exactly as he would re remembered her with uh, no emotion and he pretty much had to um, take care of her the rest of her life. And this is the book I was telling you about that I had read. And even in, in here, Maureen Donaldson talks pretty much in the same regard. She says that he viewed himself as almost a male version of his mother where he just uh, would nitpick and, and destroy all the women in his life. And even Maureen says in here, he was just a hard person to get along with because he would he would get his feelings hurt or he would his mood would change so rapidly you never really knew what was going to provoke it or, or what would change it sometimes and he credited the whole ordeal with finding out that his mother was in a um, pretty much an insane asylum and not dead he credited that as being the whole reason that he started drinking and why he eventually had to turn to LSD to get off the booze Well, good evening, everyone. I wanted to send a shout out to Creed, William Kane, Laura Whitford, and Nancy Hoppel. And thank you all for watching. I know this is probably not the most usual vlog or what you commonly expect from me, but 
it's associated with Los Angeles. It's a crazy story, and I love bringing these to you, even if it's maybe a little taboo subject. Um, yeah, you probably would look at Cary Grant and all those movies with Alfred Hitchcock, and you would never have guessed that he was someone who experimented with LSD, but now you do. Have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>